Forest rangers and campers, what are your unexplainable and downright creepy stories? Part 2. Please help us grow by subscribing our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. Back in 2010, I had just finished a wilderness leadership class and decided to go to Colorado to get some solo wilderness time. I found out about some hot springs near the Colorado River that were only accessible during the winter. During the summer, the snow melt raises the water level of the river and they become submerged and decided to go spend a few weeks out there. It was on BLM land and I had about a four mile hike from where I parked to where I was camping. The BLM lady who watched the land saw me when I arrived and asked me to just write the date on my windshield every week to let her know I'm still alive out there. Anyways, it was pretty pleasant out there, but every night I was terrified of the bears they should be sleeping. But if they aren't, it means they are hungry as fuck and I'm for dinner. For this reason, I decided to set up camp close to a cliff. It was about 40 down to the river and I figured, Worst case scenario, I could jump and then get to the hot springs to prevent hyperthermia. It's a crazy plan. But once you're out there, you realize bear spray is kind of useless inside the tent. So one early morning, I hear these loud animal noises outside my tent. They are getting closer and very loud, accompanied by grunting and breathing noises. I was too scared to open my tent. I just froze, and the steps kept getting closer and closer and closer. At this point, I could hear it sniffing my tent. I don't dare move. I just lay there. It starts to move away from my tent, but it's still out there. And now I hear more than one animal. I finally poke my head out, and it's a herd of elk. I swear, though. It was probably the most scared I've ever been out camping. Count two. I used to be in a group that's somewhat like the scouts, so we spent a lot of time in the woods and some weird shit happened often, but most of the time it was easy to explain. One thing happened, though, that to this day scares the living shit out of me. I was a leader for the age group, 8-10 years old, and we were out on a camping trip. It was the first year we stayed on that terrain, and it was huge. Normally, we tend to explore the majority of a terrain before the kids arrive, so we were aware of any possible dangerous spots to avoid. This time, it was impossible. Every camp we have what we call a night game. It's usually a scary game in which the kids have to complete several tasks while the leaders scare the ever-loving shit out of them. Obviously, we had one too during that camp. We masked up as monsters and hid out in the woods close to the checkpoints they had to pass. While running in between checkpoints, I found an open stretch of forest with little to no foliage, so it was ideal for chasing after them. There was no real room to hide besides behind trees, so I couldn't use my flashlight or they'd be able to see me from miles away. It was dark, like the unsettling kind of dark that plays tricks on your eyes and you start imagining things that aren't real. During my stay there, I saw a shadow that was around my size running past me a few times. I couldn't see it very well, so I just assumed I was imagining things because nothing was there when I turned my flashlight on. The game was nearing its end, and I saw the shadow again. This time, I could see it vaguely standing near a tree not too far away from me. I thought it was one of the other leaders hiding to scare kids and decided to go over there as it was about time to go back. I aimed my flashlight towards the tree, and while getting closer, I noticed that there was indeed someone standing there, dressed in what looked like a torn burlap sack, and had their head covered with a few white plastic bags that looked like they were tied together. I started to feel pure dread. Something felt really off. I asked if everything was okay, but they didn't respond. The only thing I heard was this weird sound that sounded like someone knocking on wood. Nevertheless, I went a bit closer until I was about 10 meters away from this person. The knocking sound turned out to be that person smacking his head repeatedly into the tree, and I noticed he looked like a male. He was barefoot, and his arms and legs were covered with crusted mud. His hands were in a weird, cramped position. I was convinced this was just one of the other leaders pulling a prank, so I told them to knock it off. He slowly turned his head and started walking towards me. Something inside me just told me to run. It didn't matter if it was a, just a stupid prank and I ran away scared for nothing. If this wasn't a prank, it felt like I was in serious danger. So I ran as fast as I could. 
I heard him running after me, but I didn't want to turn around to look as I'd probably run into a tree. I arrived back at the campsite and every single person that could be dressed like that was already there. They couldn't have gotten there before me and if they did, they sure as hell didn't have the time to change into their regular clothes. Still, I told them and that they gave me a good scare with that. They just looked weird at me. Thinking I was trying to scare them and we left it at that, next day I wanted to go check it out. Who knows, maybe some weirdo ate the wrong mushroom and might be out there dying from hypothermia. I took someone else with me just in case and there was nothing but endless trees. We arrived at the tree, where I saw the person banging his head and there was a dead, skinned, decomposing rabbit nailed to the tree. We called the cops. They looked around quickly and brushed it off as just a prank from another scouting group or some kids from the nearby town and left it at that. We didn't notice anything weird after that, so it probably was a dumb prank. But seriously, some people have a fucked up sense of humor. Account 3. I was out camping with my dog one night in a, along the Mogollon Rim of Arizona. It was dark and we were sitting around the campfire when we hear something behind a bush close to our camp. Instead of my dog barking at it, he begins to whimper. I didn't think nothing of it and just tended to the fire. After a couple of minutes, we were some more noises from a different bush. This time my dog gets up and goes over to the tent and scratches the door because he wants to go in. I toss a couple of rocks in the direction I heard the noise and nothing happened. I'm spooked now, so I toss a couple of pieces of wood on the fire and climb into my tent with my dog, hoping that the light from the fire would keep whatever was out there away. We eventually fall asleep and luckily had no other disturbances during the night. The next morning, I go out behind the bushes where we had heard the noises and found mountain lion tracks that were circling around our camp. I'm sure glad I didn't go looking at night when I heard the noises. Account 4 when I went backpacking at Philmont Boy Scout Place, every crew started out with a ranger that went out with the crew for the first couple of days just to make sure that they were going to be okay and had the necessary skills to get to their destinations. After they left the crews, they would head to the nearest staffed camp or pickup location. Our ranger was telling us about one of his hikes back after leaving a crew. He followed along a game trail since they are usually easy ways to get through the woods, and as he was walking a mountain lion walked up behind him and then scented him like a house cat does by rubbing against your legs. When a mountain lion does that apparently you involuntarily defecate and urinate in your pants and then hope to God the lion was just in a playful mood. As it turned out this one was indeed just fucking with him and he made it safely back to camp. Account 5 I was the lone recreation ranger in a small district in southern Idaho. Nearest town from guard station was about an 1.5 hours away by car. After moving into the guard station, solar power was not working, and I hadn't slept for about a month due to various factors. Bats in the cabin, something walking on the deck at night. The woods there always had an eerie feeling to them, unlike the southwest Ponderosa forest that I was used to, about two months into the seasonal job. I started to hear something walking and scratching on the deck at night, perhaps even on the door. Now this district was known for its badgers and beavers, so I didn't think much of it when leaving the cabin at night. I always had an eerie feeling like I was being watched. One night, I was returning from my grocery run, always went on Tuesday nights, and I had a bad feeling. At the time, I did not have my shotgun in the vehicle. After stepping out of the vehicle, I looked to the right of the cabin, about 50 feet from my front door. All I could see were two eyes, about 3, 10 on 5, 4 FT in the air. To say I freaked out was an understatement. I started yelling, get the fuck out of here. But the eyes only crouched down and inched closer. At this point, I could tell it was a large animal of some kind, definitely not a coyote. I tossed a piece of firewood in the general area, and the creature leaped back a bit but did not make a sound tossed four or five more pieces and creature still inched forward. At this point, I fumbled with the keys. Of course, the fucking solar power was out again. I managed to get inside and grabbed my shotgun. Technically, you are not supposed to have guns in gov housing, but who the fuck lives in the, uh, hills have eyes, back, country, and does not carry. Outside, creature was bit closer. Still could not get a good look with my shitty headlamp, loaded shotgun and continued to throw pieces of wood with one hand. 
Finally, the creature walked back into the brush. That night, I drank about four IPAs and slept with my shotgun. In the morning, trail crew came up and we found mountain lion tracks all over the porch. Rocking bench and compound leading back to the creek. After that event, I always heard the rocking chair move and someone or something walking on the porch, but never found any tracks after that point. Considering that it was always muddy up there, it was weird to not find any tracks. I've been stalked by mountain lions before and never had that eerie feeling like I did in those woods. Account 6. I'm an avid mountain climber here in the Philippines. One time my group went on a night hike to a mountain located in central Luzon. Naturally, we took the easier trail, North Peak, since we were hiking with some newbies. At around 4 a.m. we broke camp and started our descent. Almost one hour in, we noticed that we kept passing the same fallen tree and the same boulder. The trail was very straightforward and many of us have climbed the mountain before. But for some reason, all of us were going round in circles. One of the more superstitious hikers decided to make us all stand in a circle, utter a prayer, and leave an offering of food. Only then were we able to complete or dissent. Account 7. I was in the Gila wilderness and a convoy of us campers, fishers were making the drive on the dirt road from Mogollon to Snow Lake when we spotted a forest ranger guy pulled over looking in a ditch. Turns out some idiot tried to make a U-turn and didn't realize the loose rock makes it hard to stop. They went over the edge and high, centered. We're miles from the nearest official campground, and it's early spring and the nighttime gets pretty damn cold. We get a jeep with a winch in position and start to pull the guy out of the ditch. Off a hill comes a white dude in a purple velvet sweatsuit. He's got a walking stick, fanny pack, and the purple velvet sweatsuit. That's it. He's a blonde dude and pretty skinny. He comes up to us and he tells us he's German. And having a great time, we could not get over the purple velvet suit. It was like a real pimp sweatsuit. The ranger is immediately suspicious, wants to know where's he staying and where he came from. It was around 9, 0 in the morning, and the only way he could have gotten where he came from was to hike for hours. The German guys is a goofy fuck and just points off toward the other mountain when asked where he's staying, going, We all think it's funny, but also question how the guy is getting along with no water and no food. The sun is intense above 5,000 feet, even if it's only 75 degrees. The German guy refuses water or any other help and just crosses the road, goes off into the woods. The ranger told us he can't really keep the guy from doing that since he seemed okay. He said he'd check a few campsites in that direction later to see if he made it. We get to Snow Lake and commence drinking like fish in order to better catch fish. That evening, the ranger pops by to tell us that nobody at any other camp had seen the dude. He radioed around and no other rangers had abandoned camps or missing campers and they surely hadn't seen a German dude in purple pimp sweatsuit. That range rolled off duty the next day and his replacement came by to make sure the other ranger was smoking something we gave him. We assured him it all happened. Never heard another word about the German in the purple pimp sweatsuit, but makes for a good story. Update. Thanks for all the interest. I texted my buddy that was with me that day to reminisce about the German, and he reminded me that the purple pimp German looked a lot like the actor Reese Ifans who played Nigel, the kicker in the Keanu Reeves classic The Replacements. Hope that helps with the mental image. The movie came out like three years after the camping trip. But we remember seeing the moving and thinking Nigel looked just like the crazy German. My friend reiterated how absolutely happy the German was. Account 8 this was around 2015, when I went on a day hike at a Mount GB, somewhere in the southern part of Luzon area. The week prior to my hike, I was in the same area with a friend. Being that the trail is relatively straightforward, we decided not to hire a guide. Fast forward to the present, I decided to do a nighttime trek with five of my colleagues in tow. Since I was the one who knew the trail, I was the group leader. About an hour or so, we heard something that went psst, psst, psst as we were hiking the trail. We looked around thinking it might be one of the locals. Some parts of the trail led to small houses. Anyway, it soon stopped, so we forgot all about it. We soon reached a narrow part of the trail bordered by shallow cliffs on either side. Since I was the lead, I was very focused on the trail. 
and I didn't notice that my colleagues were lagging behind until one of them said, Hey, why don't you shine your flashlight right in front of you? I stopped walking and waited for them to catch up when we reached the campsite. I asked my colleague why he told me to shine the flashlight right in front of myself. Well, he whispered, you were walking so fast I didn't think you saw the child standing right in front of you. <laughs>